Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a review and comparison of three graphene spray coatings, including 303, Adams, and Renegade graphene spray coatings. So why did I choose these particular three spray coatings? For one thing, they all have at least some sort of graphene content. Both 303 and Adams are products you guys have requested I review, and the Renegade was really just a shot in the dark as I have no idea whatsoever about it or the brand, so it could be interesting. Additionally, all three of these graphene sprays claim quite an impressive 12 months plus durability, as well as some performance claims that if I didn't obviously trust everything I was told, I might just think they were fibbing. In any case guys, almost every brand seems to be on board with these sensationalized claims so I'll try not to hold it against them and focus more on some comprehensive testing to evaluate their performance in areas such as the user experience, looks, feel, hydrophobic behavior and potential durability so let's get to it. First up is the user experience or behavior of these graphene spray coatings. And as per usual, I did a bunch of testing prior to making this video in which I'll use to further draw my conclusions. But in the video, you're gonna see me apply these coatings to two test panels, both of which were washed, decontaminated, compound, and given an IPA wipe, but only one panel was further polished to remove haze, and that panel was given two layers of each coating here. While the second panel was left with a little haze in the finish and was only given one layer of each coating, as in my experience in making these videos, a little haze helps allow you guys to see the results better on camera as well as more comprehensively assess certain results. Also, some of these sprays can be used directly on the paint with microfiber and foam applicators or cloths, all of which I did test in the lead up to making this video, but to keep things consistent, I use them with microsuede cloths, which again will help in additional upcoming evaluations. Starting with 303, you immediately see its darker black color compared to the other two products that are really more transparent, at least when you spray them. I'd like to think it's just a graphene oxide base and not added black dye for effect, but I really don't know. Now, whether I was using it with foam, suede, or microfiber applicators, I didn't see any difference in the user experience, but I did save on product as it didn't get soaked up as much by the suede cloth, so I do recommend them. I think 303 spreads and lays down relatively easy on the panel, and what's more, it's very easy to see where you've been as it's quite opaque in its look. It really doesn't take all that long for it to flash, two to four minutes in general, though in hotter or colder weather, it can certainly vary. You'll also see that it hazes over like crazy and so chalky like no other spray coating I've used. When it comes to the wipe off, this is where I was a little surprised. Looking so thick and opaque, I initially thought this is gonna be tough and grippy, but I was way off as it's super easy and just melts away like a breeze as you wipe it. It's also important to mention that it does have a strong solventy smell, close to that of many full ceramic coatings, so you should work in a well ventilated area. And to give yourself the best user experience, make sure 303 is mostly hazed over but not completely bone dry when you wipe it, or else you will have a slightly more difficult user experience. But in all honesty, even if you are a little bit off, it's still pretty reasonable. I also found when layering 303, whether it was an hour, a few hours, or even the next day, the second layer is never as easy to apply as the first. In fact, it's quite a noticeably harder wipe off, but also harder to finish streak free. So I quite enjoyed applying a layer, but the second layer was far more work. All in all, I think it's a really nice spray coating to work with. It's very easy to apply, wipe, and read especially for beginners as you get really obvious visual flash and wipe off time indications. And if you have any high spots or streaks you missed, it's easy to go back, reapply it and fix it. I didn't enjoy layering it, so I tend to stick to one layer and it is a little solventy strong for a consumer based product, but still quite acceptable. When it comes to Adam's Graphene Ceramic Spray, this really is more of a traditional ceramic coating application in the way it feels and applies though it's still got a little of its own thing happening. It spreads into the section quite nice and easy, but unlike 303, is very subtle in appearance and barely noticeable either than a wet look. What's also interesting is that the streaks you create while applying it disappear within seconds and almost melt away into a flat uniform finish. And I don't think I've seen that before with any wax sealant or coating. It's just interesting from a geeky point of view. The second interesting thing is the visual flashing behavior. 
At least in my environment, Adams was really slow to flash, at least 5 to 10 minutes. In my first application, I thought nothing's happening, so I waited and then waited some more, and then all of a sudden a slight purple hue started appearing over it. It was strange because, like I mentioned earlier, there were no streaks, so it's very subtle and slow happening, which is quite different to what I'm used to. The wipe off itself is quite good, and I'd say quite close to a light version of a traditional ceramic coating. But in direct comparison, 303 was certainly easier and much quicker to work with. The other thing to mention is that its subtle, non-hazing and barely noticeable purple flashing hue made it difficult to read, especially on lighter coloured paints during my testing. And I think for beginners, they're going to struggle to read flash times and see high spots or streaks in the finish, as it's hard to visually see and assess. The other thing that has to be said is that the Adams coating has quite a strong solventy smell to put it nicely. But to put it more accurately, it's volatile in its aroma. Don't do what I did and smell the bottle close up with the top off because you'll pay for it by partially losing your scent of smell for a few hours. This has to be one of the most potent eye-watering coatings I've ever used, including all my professional full strength coatings and I'll leave it at that. All in all, as long as you have great ventilation, work outside, it's quite a nice user experience in the way it lays down and wipes off. However, what is a little more difficult is reading its subtle flash time and spotting high spots in the finish, but it may be something you get used to with experience. Renegade Graphene is immediately different to both 303 and Adams in that it doesn't have any solvent smell, but is a rather nice sweet scent, meaning it's most likely water-based. What's also different is that you can quite safely and effectively spray directly on the panel and immediately wipe it off, as it does have an almost instant flash time. So it's really a spray and wipe application, though you can certainly apply it as a traditional coating if you wish, and as I've done here. Now this is great from a user perspective, but it does beg the question of whether it can be this user friendly, water based, and still perform up to its 12 months plus durability claim. But we'll just have to wait and see. But it's not all peaches and creams as far as the user experience goes. Now in relation to the wipe off, it is in fact super easy, nice and rewarding to wipe down more so than the other two coatings. But it does tend to smear and streak a bit. What I found is that if you wipe off its excess residue and then keep on wiping, it never stops smearing. What you need to do after you wipe it down is stop, walk away and it will for the most part keep on leveling down so that most of the smears do in fact go away on their own after a few minutes. But in saying that, I did still spot a few smears and patches at times in the finish. Mostly on black panels I tested it on, but on lighter colours it was barely noticeable, if at all. From a user experience perspective, there's just no denying that Renegade is so much more pleasant, quick and easy to work with, as it really feels more like a quick detailer to apply. But I also feel it's a touch smeary and could be easier to level down perfectly. As I mentioned, it does take some good lighting, darker paint and a more discerning eye to spot them. Though it did bother me if I'm being honest. Next up was assisting the ability of these graphene coatings to visually improve the finish of automotive paint. So in this test, I'm looking for improvements in gloss, saturation, filling abilities and overall look. Now I tried to give you guys a look at the panels and coatings under the verse light, but you'll hopefully see that although the first test panel and having a look outdoors is somewhat helpful, it's really having a look at the second test panel with a little haze in the finish and more so indoors that gives us the best information and clearest camera footage. I understand you guys would like to see these products on different colored paints, on perfectly polished paint and in outdoor lighting. But if I show you that and each section looks identical on camera to the next one, it doesn't give you any valuable information. Using black paint, leaving a little haze in the finish and filming in a dark room with a single but good inspection light is what allows my camera to capture footage and results that are identifiable and distinguishable so you guys can judge them for yourselves. Now with that said, here's what I observed and what you'll hopefully see more clearly on the second panel once indoors. I have to say that for a shot in the dark, Renegade looks pretty amazing, and I don't think it's all that debatable that it has great gloss, the most saturation, and the most filling ability of all three products. This is definitely not what I was expecting at all, but I think the paint is spoken, and it is without a doubt quite a nice, glossy, rich finish. 
Next in line, I also don't think it's all that hard in seeing that 303 Graphene has done quite a good job in improving reflective gloss, adding some nice darker saturation and filling in at least a decent amount of the compounding swirls and haze. I still think it's a step down compared to Renegade, but I also think the two are much closer together and just a small step or so apart. Now in slight contrast, Adams is perhaps a touch disappointing here. I think it has without a doubt improved on gloss as well as saturation and cleaned up or masked up a little of the finer haze in the finish. But I'd just be lying if I said it was impressive here, at least compared to the other two coatings. Now one thing I do want to say in Adam's defense is that when I layered these coatings, I did see that Adam's benefited the most from an additional layer as far as looks go. While I didn't see as much of a visual improvement from Renegade or 303. So I think it can better improve the look of the Adams graphene with an additional layer, but even then I'd say two layers of Adams isn't quite as good as one layer of the other two, but the difference does become less. Next up was assessing the slickness or lack of friction that these coatings produce on car paint. Just like the previous test, this one was pretty much clear cut. Renegade was by far the slickest product here and by all accounts quite a slick coating or sealant in its reduced friction and just the way it feels nice and silky. Adams was in third place here, definitely showing a bit more friction in its section, but I will say it's certainly not the grippiest coating I've ever tried and it may actually be more typical as far as coatings go overall in this area, though in this comparison it was the least slick. 303 sat in the middle here, really being dead centre between the other two. Though the interesting thing was that during the application, 303 was the one here that felt the grippiest or least slick, yet after it was allowed to fully cure, it really did seem to set with far more slickness. Now one question I get a lot is why does slickness even matter? I mean, apart from the nice feel, does it do anything else? And the answer is yes. If you have a look at this panel after I ran a glass ceramic coating bottle over it, you'll see that the Adams being the least slick has been inflicted with the most and most severe swirls and scratches. While 303 being a touch slicker has less swirls in that section and Renegade being the most slick has in fact resisted the light scratches the best, though it certainly has a few of its own. Now obviously don't run glass bottles over your car paint, but having reduced friction without a doubt can help prevent or at least reduce washing, drying and wiping swirls with that added slickness. That's why it matters and the paint feeling super nice is just an added bonus. Now a couple of these coatings claim either 9H hardness or at least creating a hardened layer that can resist scratching. I did another quick test on the first test panel using a clean household tea towel to wipe over each section a few times with just light pressure and once again you'll hopefully see that all three sections had a nice amount of new swirls and light scratches created. Now again, try not to wipe your car with a tea towel, but it's not exactly a scotch bright scouring pad or a nail I was running along the paint, yet it was enough to scratch it even with the fully cured coatings on top. Apart from showing you that none of these coatings will in fact resist scratching to any significant level, though I'm sure they can help reduce it. The other question is, do they in fact harden as claimed? One test I always do with my own ceramic coating jobs is keep the micro suede applicator cloths and check that they have in fact hardened, which they always do within a few hours to a day or so depending on the coating and weather. After a full week of curing, what you'll hopefully see is that none of these coatings have in fact hardened to any degree, let alone 9H hardness. In fact, the cloths are just as limp as they were to start with. You can also pour some of the coating into a small shallow container and let the solvents escape or even look for hardened crystal shards around the cap or trigger to assess if they do significantly harden. I don't think hardness is the most important feature of a coating at all, but if you claim it hardens then it should harden, and if it doesn't that's fine, just be honest because some people may actually test this out. So onto some water behaviour testing to assess the hydrophobic performance of these coatings. Now as I begin to introduce different water spray patterns and various amounts of water over this first test panel, which is the one with just a single layer of each coating, I'm also going to discuss what you'll see later on on the other test panel with two layers of each coating, as well as what I discovered on a few other test panels in the lead up to making this video. There's just no denying that Adams has the best hydrophobic behaviour of all three coatings in every test I did. I think it sheets the water super quick, has some nice propped up water bead contact angles and shapes 
and is more of a true ceramic or graphene coating in this area. I wouldn't say it's up there with the most hydrophobic coatings I've ever tested, but nonetheless, it is still quite impressive, especially compared to the other two. Between 303 and Renegade, I thought it was a lot closer and there was less separating them as far as water behavior goes. But what I can tell you is that with a single layer of each coating applied, 303 was noticeably better overall. Yet when I tried layering all these coatings, I found that in almost every case, 303 seemed to have degraded hydrophobic performance while Renegade was the opposite with better water behavior. And this was pretty consistent in all my testing. I think this comes back to the fact that I had a fairly poor experience layering 303 every time I tried it, so you may really be better off just sticking to a single layer, while Renegade seems to benefit more from an additional layer. The last thing I would say is that although both 303 and Renegade don't tend to deal with extreme amounts of water all that well, when it came to more typical rainfall amounts of water, they both beaded extremely well with great water bead contact angles. In any case, Adams was at least a couple of steps ahead of the other two here, while 303 and Renegade were much closer, and whether you layer them or not will have some impact as to how they perform in terms of hydrophobic behaviour. The final test in this review was assessing the chemical resistance of these coatings to help predict their potential environmental resistance as well as their resistance to car cleaning chemicals. For this test, I used a 1 to 3 dilution of Carpre Multi-X, firstly just lightly hitting the panel and then getting more and more aggressive with each subsequent application. Now one thing you'll notice throughout the chemical testing is that Renegade did a fairly good job at rejecting and not allowing the chemical to bond as effectively. While 303 was okay in this area and Adams was quite poor here not being able to sheet the chemical at all. This is important to observe because it gives us an insight as to how effectively these coatings can reject certain chemicals and contamination and not allow them to bond and harm them as quickly or effectively. In saying that, what you're going to see almost immediately is quite a good resistance to the chemical by 303 from the very start to the very end of this chemical testing, and not only on this first test panel, but also on the second test panel, and really in all the tests I did beforehand. Now 303 was without a doubt also affected and degraded with each chemical application, but in direct comparison to the other two coatings, it was far and away better and just kept on hanging in there hit after hit. I honestly didn't have high hopes for Renegade here, and overall guys, it was the least chemical resistant coating here, but you'll see that at least on the second test panel with two coats applied, it actually did pretty well and much better than it did on this first test panel to give Adams a run for its money. Adams was really in the middle here, especially when we're talking about a single layer. I felt that even with just a light chemical hit, it was quite significantly affected, more than I'd expect based on its previous impressive water behavior. So this isn't what I expected, but it is what I experienced with every chemical resistance test I put it through, regardless of whether it was laid or not. In fact, layering didn't seem to help it at all in this area. Overall, I think 303 did really well, and it seems like it may last pretty well down the track. 12 months, I'm not sure, but I guess it's possible. I have some grave doubts that Renegade would last anywhere near 12 months, but it does seem like adding an extra layer or two could get you somewhat closer, but again, 12 months is a very big stretch. Just like Renegade, it's hard to imagine Adams lasting anywhere close to a year unless it's a garaged weekend driver, but again guys, anything's possible. Now I've tried to give you my most objective observations while testing these coatings, but as you have a look at the hydrophobic and chemical testing on the second test panel, I'll sum up this video with my more subjective personal opinions. Starting with Renegade Graphene Spray Coating, I think it's a stretch to call it a long-term coating, but you know what, almost every detailing brand seems intent on inflating and sensationalizing performance claims on every single product, so it's unfair to single anyone out. Like I mentioned, I had no idea what to expect from this product, and I have to say that from its nice user experience, fantastic looks, slick finish, acceptable water behavior, and at least some reasonable durability potential, especially when layered, it ticks a lot of boxes and you could certainly do a lot worse. I'll be honest, my expectations were super low and I expected it to be rubbish, but I was wrong. It's actually pretty good with all things considered and I'm happy to admit that. Did it blow my mind or set a new standard? No, 
but I think if the brand can solve its tendency to smear during application and finish a touch more evenly, as well as be honest that it's probably a three to four month spray sealant, it could be a winner. Now, unlike Renegade, I did have higher expectations when it came to Adams Graphene Ceramic Spray Coating because Adams is a detailing brand with a great reputation and a long history in the detailing space. But I also think it's fair to say that when it comes to more durable, long-term ceramic or nano coatings, Adams is still new to this area and at least with this Adams coating, it tends to show. I didn't mind the application and wipe off, but that volatile solvent smell needs addressing as it's unnecessary. There's far more user-friendly solvents available. It's also important to allow the user to clearly see flashing characteristics, streaks and high spots in a coating. It really helps during the application and this coating is just too hard to see or read. Beyond that, it's just difficult to get past the fact that it looks quite average in terms of gloss and saturation. It just needs to look better. I thought the slickness was fine, the water behavior was really great, but its inability to resist even a light chemical hit was worrisome and disappointing. I know Adams has released a newer advanced version of this coating, which I hope shows an improvement and evolution of this coating, but I've yet to try it so I really don't know. It also has to be said that at $100 Aussie dollars for a smaller 335ml bottle, it's almost three times the price of the other two products here, which is hard to swallow. Something I really appreciated with 303 Graphene was the fact that it has such a different application look, feel and experience that I can't compare to another product. Yet, it was really nice to apply, easy to evaluate and did it all in its own unique way. That's just something I don't get to experience much anymore after almost three decades in this space. But importantly, it also looks fantastic on the paint, has a nice slick feel once fully cured with decent water behavior and its ability to resist breaking down was impressive, being the only product here that would stand the chance living up to a 12 month durability claim in my opinion. I do think it could have a less solventy smell to increase the user experience, but it's still within reason and I also think this coating is best left to a single layer for reasons I've previously discussed. 303 seems to be a brand that doesn't release all that many detailing products, but when it does, like 303 Aerospace and like 303 Spray and Rinse, they tend to be a winner and I have to say that 303 Graphene Spray Coating is no exception. At about the 50 Aussie dollar price point for a massive 458 mil that could probably do 20 cars, it's also well priced with all things considered. Look guys, I always want you to use whatever products meet your needs and I accept that not everybody has the same experience as me. But I do try my hardest to be as fair, thorough and informative as I possibly can with these reviews. And if nothing else, I hope you at least appreciate the insane amount of work that comes with producing these videos. I think I'll leave it there guys and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad in which I'll have a link to in the description box or you can now hit the thanks button below the video. And thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.